Well, praise the Lord. God is good. God is great. We serve a God who is merciful. We serve a God who loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son so that you and I could be truly set free. Hallelujah. Well, we're starting a brand new series on freedom. And what freedom is really about. And today, as we're going to start off with reading from John chapter 8, uh, we're going to start reading from John chapter 8, and we are going to uh, uh, every, you know, we're going to look at everything and we are going to talk about what is real freedom. Hallelujah. Amen. So remember, I always go to my Bible promise. And praise the Lord, we've got people watching. Thank you so much. Uh, so we are live and everything is well. Thank you, Lord. So the Bible promises, We I always go back to my Bible promise. And then I just look at a little scripture. We pray a scripture and we go straight into the teaching. So get ready. Hallelujah. It says, I, the Lord, the light in a man's way. He makes his steps firm. Though he stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Hallelujah. So I pray. Father, thank you. Uh, that you delight in my way as I follow the ways of Jesus Christ. See, there's the key. That's a powerful prayer. And because I follow the way of Jesus Christ, you make my way and my steps firm. Hallelujah. Though I may stumble, I thank you, Father. I have the confidence that I will not fall. For you, O oh God, upholds me with your righteous right hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Let's talk about freedom. And I want to bring up something on your screen here. Let's talk about freedom. What is real freedom? And I want to just say this to you from the outset of this series that I'm going to do. Real freedom is, number one, not to be in bondage to any person. Real freedom is to be totally yourself. Real freedom is not to give somebody copyrights of your life. Real freedom is staying original. Real freedom is having a conscience that does not condemn you. Real freedom is not to carry the guilt of your past. We're going to look at all different aspects. Now, here on your screen, as you can see, grace that breaks the chains. And I want to talk to you about that because freedom from guilt, shame, and uh, uh, anything that wants to overwork you. You know, that's another topic on its own. Anything that wants to overwork you would actually put you in bondage. Guess to what? To discouragement. If something wants to overwork you, you are going to feel like in bondage to never finding time for yourself, you're going to feel oppressed in a sense of driven 
And you and I were never made to be driven by anything. Hallelujah. So let's get into a few things here uh, this morning. And uh, uh, perhaps at this point, I also want to mention to you that real freedom is very uh, significant in the sense of Jesus himself in his word tells us that there is no Jew whether it's Greek, slave, free. Uh, uh, we are all equal in God's eyes. And when somebody keeps pointing out uh, racism, that individual is not free. I want to really, uh, we, we, we need to look at the truth. If somebody keeps pointing out, uh, you know, uh, prejudice and, and keep pointing out uh, racial discrimination, whilst there is nothing to justify their statement, that is bondage. Real freedom. Jesus said, and, uh, you know, it is written in his word, for in Christ Jesus, there is no slave, uh, there is no Jew, no Greek. Uh, in other words, we are all equal in Christ Jesus. And when somebody is set upon a racism, you are in bondage before you have even tried to point a finger. Because by the discontentment of insufficient character, that person is trying to find fault to justify their own inferiority or hidden agenda. We need to look at these things. It is real. Jesus was never, never, never caught up with prejudice. He treated everybody equal. And I thank God that we live in a country where we all have access to freedom. But if we abuse our freedom to accuse someone else that you are putting us in bondage whilst there is freedom, you are putting yourself back into a slave mentality of bondage. God bless you, Sharon. God bless you. At least we're having somebody watching here uh, on the Independence uh, Day federal holiday. But you see, we've got to look at these things from a proper perspective. When the woman at the well said to Jesus, uh, Oh, you Jews, how come you talking to me? You're a Jew. She tried to measure herself through prejudice. And Jesus ignored that statement completely. He says, oh, if you only knew the gift of God that is standing in front of you, you would have asked him for water instead of you basically focusing on your narrative of a uh, depleted mentality of, oh, prejudice. You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. There is no Jew, no uh, slave, no free, no. Uh, 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 there is no discrimination in Christ Jesus. We are all equal. And that is where real freedom comes. Freedom is not measured by the color of your skin. Freedom is not measured. Oh, there's my Lizzie too. And she's got somebody who looks just like me on her photo. 
That's my girlfriend, Lizzie. You see, freedom is not measured by the color of your skin. We all have red blood. That's why Jesus, he destroyed the flesh and he shed his red blood. You have red blood, I have red blood. Doesn't matter whether you're Indian, Japanese, uh, whether you Swahili, Zulu, uh, whether you are white or black or red or whatever. We all have red blood. And it was the red blood of Jesus Christ that has redeemed us from this curse of the law of not just sickness, death, how, and poverty, but that word poverty also goes with a poverty mentality. People have a poverty mentality when they are focused on the race. Oh, you prejudice. Oh, you hate us. No, that's the devil's tactics to divide America and any house divided, and I'm going to put the word country in, any country divided against itself cannot stand. Hallelujah. You see, any house divided against itself will not be able to stand. Now, you have to understand that we are in a time where everybody is looking for some freedom. And the only true freedom is found in Christ Jesus. When people measure people by the color of their skin or by uh, through the past that has been canceled, you become an accuser. That's right. The devil, uh, the devil's tactics is to accuse people. The more you can hurl an accusation, the more you will stir up anger and you will stir up different uh, 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 spirits of bitterness, uh, spirits of uh, 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 separatism, spirits of disunity. You see, the accuser of the brethren was cast out of heaven. Now, that accuser, the devil, is looking for personalities to express its principality of bondage through. And so, the, if, when the devil cannot get to people because they know God's word, the devil will use people against people and sow chaos, division, and strife. And we need to recognize what we are dealing with in our nation and even in nations. Now, I am not pointing a finger to any specific individual. I am just saying we need to be awake to take. I do not have a right to condemn anyone, but I do have a right to uh, bring to light by talking about it, what is happening, and then I pray that God will grant you discernment in how to handle these things. And let me say, if there's ever a time that we need to pray, it is now. We need to pray for our leaders, pray for our country, pray for the people in the country. Pray that the eyes of many will open up and understand what real freedom is about. Freedom is not pointing a finger at somebody else, accusing them of prejudice. That is not freedom. That means you are in bondage yourself. And how can you that are in bondage point a finger to be liberated whilst you are in bondage? It doesn't work that way. Uh, Jesus became part of the solution. He broke the chains of 
bondage. Hallelujah. He broke that wall of hostility of the flesh between man and God. So when we are going to continue with this discussion about freedom, you're going to hear a lot of things. So get ready for a happy, clappy ride. Amen. Because it is knowing the truth and obeying the truth that will set us free. We all know about truth, but knowing about truth will never set you free. Let me go there. I'm in Galatians, but here we go. Uh, where is it now? John chapter 8. And I am trusting God that this uh, series is going to liberate you also uh, from sensitive issues in your own personal life. And uh, we're going to handle all about the works of the flesh and all different aspects because I want to get to the mind. There are emotional bondage. There are thoughts uh, that are chained uh, the atmosphere in people's minds we're gonna go into a lot of things god bless you nehemiah now uh, in uh, john 8 verse 30 let me just get there and see um, uh, let me just see here just a minute then jesus said in john 8 31 then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples. See, you don't become a disciple of Jesus unless you abide in his word. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see, knowing about truth will never make you free. But when you abide in Christ, he says there very clearly, if you abide in my word, Jesus is the word that was made flesh. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Listen, there's a lot of stuff we all know about. But when you know that you know that you know by abiding in something, by embracing it, practicing it, then you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Now verse 36. Watch this now. Okay. Are you ready? Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Now let's pause. Let's just pause. It says, if the Son makes you free, you are truly free indeed. Right? That means only if the Holy Spirit convicts you of something that you're doing that you're not supposed to be doing and making you uncomfortable in the arena of the atmosphere of your mind called your conscience. Now you are under conviction and when you respond to that conviction by acknowledging, I have to practice the truth. I have to practice the truth. When you practice the truth under a conviction, then only the Son, which is Jesus Christ, sets you free. And when He sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. When Jesus makes us free, how does he make you free? Once you only are convicted. When you are convicted of truth and then you respond to truth, then only you will be set free in an instant. I remember many years ago, 
Many years ago, I used to uh, smoke, and I want you to understand, I've got nothing against anybody who smokes. And uh, Somebody says to me one day, uh, now that I'm a Christian, can I uh, drink? Can I smoke? Can I, have, can I go and dance? I said, who am I? I don't carry the nail prints of Jesus Christ. I cannot tell you. But what I can tell you is this. If God has given you permission, then who am I? So it's between you and God. Amen? Now, having said that, let's just talk here about this situation of freedom. I want you to understand something very, very clearly. And that is, let's go, just go to Galatians 5. That's where I was earlier on. And uh, are, you, are you enjoying this teaching? Are you getting something out of it? Yes? All right. And preach with me. Put your comments there and I can put it on the screen and so on and so forth. Now Galatians 5 verse 1. It says, stand fast, therefore in the liberty, in the liberty. It says, stand fast in the liberty. It did not say stand fast in bondage. It did not say stand fast in accusing. Pointing your finger. It did not say, stand fast in knowing about. It says, stand fast. Therefore, in the freedom, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again by a yoke of bondage. Beloved, I want you to understand something today. God is not prejudiced. And I think I'm going to put that on your screen. All right? I'm going to put that God is not a prejudice. And let's put that on our screen out there. Amen? God is not prejudiced. And I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to... Type it out. And I'm going to put there why with a question mark because he is, there it comes. Okay. God is spirit and spirit is colorless. Spirit is not white. The spirit of God is not white. The spirit of God is not black. The Spirit of God is not Japanese. The Spirit of God is not Greek. The Spirit of God is not a slave. The Spirit of God is not a, 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 nor slave, Greek, free, whatever you want to say. The Spirit of God is colorless, and we must stop with this business of entertaining prejudice. Because prejudice is of the devil. What a strong statement. God is not prejudiced. He does not measure mankind by your, the color of your skin. That puts man in bondage then. And God will be in bondage because which color of the skin does he like? Let me just say this to you. Thank you, Sharon, for saying amen. And Nehemiah saying yes there. Let me say this to you. I always, you know, I have a little bit of a sense of humor when it comes to all this prejudice nonsense. You, you, you take the white people, they lie on the beach and they want to uh, become a darker color. So some of the whites, they desire to be a darker color and they tan. Then you get some of the black folk in Africa, they put white cream on their face. Hello? Then you get white people, come on now, uh, ladies, you, you want your hair permed, curled. Then you get some black folk, they straighten out their hair. Listen, we all desire a piece of each other. 
And let me tell you, we need each other. You need every race, every population group, so to speak. You need different people in your life. And right in, uh, where is it now? Uh, uh, I think it's numbers, yeah. The problem started with race. Because Miriam, Moses' sister, and Aaron, they started to find fault with Moses' wife, who was a Cushite, and they did not like her color. And you know what? That prejudice stirred up. That prejudice stirred up. And I'm just looking here for something. Uh, that prejudice stirred up uh, negative things. That's right. Let me just go here. Yeah, there it is in numbers. I just want to make sure I quote it right there. Okay. Numbers chapter uh, 12, all right? So that prejudice action in uh, Miriam lashed out against Moses, a leader, and started to attack him as a leader. You know what? In Numbers uh, 12, watch this. Numbers 12, okay, verse 2. So they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. You see, when you are prejudiced, let me just point out where it was, uh, uh, Numbers 12, 1. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. She had a race problem. She had a race problem. And she spoke out against uh, the wife of Moses, who was an Ethiopian. And then they started to, if you don't watch it, you start attacking other things. Who, who, who does Moses think he is? Does he think he's the only one that God can speak through? And the Lord heard it. Then the Lord summons all of them, Moses, Aaron, Miriam, and he says, come to the tabernacle. And I believe we are standing at the threshold of a major judgment. And that judgment is going to be against these demonic spirits uh, that is stirring up race uh, uh, prejudice in the nations. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud. Watch now how God handled this. And stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron, Miriam. And they both went forward and he said, uh, you know, is there, if there's a prophet among you, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision so far. Uh, why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them and he departed and went. Watch now, watch now what happened. You talk about race. Watch this now. She was unhappy and Aaron with Moses' wife who was an Ethiopian. Watch this now. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous. You want to see white? I'll just strike you with leprosy as white as snow. Watch out. This is a dangerous moment in America. And God is not asleep. God is not asleep. I need to stop this broadcast, okay, uh, because of time. So Aaron said to Moses, Oh, my Lord, please do not lay the sin. The sin. It is sin to be prejudiced. Do not lay the sin. It is sin to point out, uh, to be uh, 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 
uh, uh, uh, to practice discrimination. It is sinful. It is sinful to be prejudiced. There's no, nothing else. But it is sin, period. No debate, no other discussion. It is sinful to be prejudiced and to be a, a, a racist or to stir up racism. It is sinful. So Aaron said to Moses, Oh my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. Please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. So Moses then cried out to the Lord saying, Please heal her, O God, I pray. And then the Lord said, Watch this now. He says, Let her be shut out of the camp. For seven days. I believe that God is going to cause in this hour some things to be shut out of the camp to uproot that spirit of racism and prejudice and discrimination and this thing of accusing people of something that is not prevalent, that is not prevalent. Because slavery has ended in America many, 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 many years ago. And let me tell you, slavery is not part of God's uh, 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 best for any person's life. Slavery is not acceptable. God is against any oppressors that wants to make slaves out of anybody. The Egyptians tried to make slaves out of uh, the Israelites and God sent in a deliverer. Hallelujah. And he delivered them from that slavery oppression. And I believe that the judgment of God is at work in the United States of America. And that is why we see all this uh, attacks on each other, you know, in the uh, political realm. Because in the principality realm, yes, there is a fight over the soul of America. And we must not let the enemy destroy America. This is a time we need to rise up and stand up for what is right. Look at that beautiful uh, 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 liberty that we have. The Statue of Liberty. We are one nation under God, under our Creator. We are one nation we must not allow the devil's tactics to divide us as a nation. Oh man, I never thought I'm going to teach on this this morning. Help, Lord. So, he struck Miriam with leprosy. God bless you, uh, Renee. You've got to understand that God, in his word, judged somebody who was a racist. And Miriam was a racist and Aaron who spoke out against Moses as a leader. His wife was an Ethiopian. Read it. It's in Numbers chapter 12. And God must have thought, okay, you want to see a different color? I'll strike you with leprosy and you will look as white as snow. You want to see white? I'll strike you with some leprosy. You see? And then Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days and the people did not journey till Miriam was brought in again. In other words, the vision that for the nation of Israel was stopped for seven days. And I'm telling you by the Spirit of the living God that the vision for America is in stalemate right now. It's not moving forward. It's not moving towards the plans of God. But it's not going to be stalemate for much longer because God is going to judge these demonic spirits trying to intimidate the American nation through race. God is going to deal with it. 
for once and for all. We are a country that is free and the country of the brave. A country that gives everybody an opportunity. There's enough patriot, uh, patriotism in America to scoop up and uproot this evil of prejudice notions. We must stop it in Jesus' name. And for seven days, that prejudice spirit caused the whole nation of Israel not to move forward. They were in stalemate. But praise God, after seven days, they came out of stalemate and they advanced. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. I did not think I was going to ever talk on this topic this morning. Sometimes when I get under this anointing, I think to myself, Lord, what is going to come out? But let's pray, enjoy your day, love one another. And remember, there is no color in Christ. There's no black, no white, no Japanese, no Chinese, no uh, Hindu, no blah, blah, blah. God is a spirit. He's no respecter of persons. He doesn't love the Americans or Christians more than he loves Africa. He loves everyone equally. That's why Jesus Christ died for everyone. Ooh, I better stop. That is why Jesus Christ died for everyone. And let me bring this up on your screen. It is by grace that we can break the chains of injustice. Freedom from these guilty nonsense of spirits accusing people in the future of which they were delivered of their past. Once you've been delivered, why do you want to bring up your deliverance of freedom that you already have to accuse that they are still bondage? It's not making sense. It's a tactic of the devil. Now let's pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I thank you that today by the Holy Spirit, you will convict the leaders of uh, countries, of nations, of, this, uh, of the uh, United States of America. Convict, Lord, Christian leaders. Convict churches, Father God, uh, that uh, where there's any form of prejudice discussions, that they will understand it is a sin, it is sinful, period, and they need to stop that and destroy those discussions through the love of yours, O oh God. I pray that America will experience a fullness of reconciliation and we bind the tactics of division and strife over this and against this nation and the malicious finger always saying race, race, race. There is no such thing. You have delivered America from it. And those demonic spirits trying to stir it up are binded in Jesus' name. And we speak freedom, freedom, freedom. For those that have been set free in Christ is free. It was for freedom that Christ was brought. That means I pray in Jesus' name that you will draw these people towards Christ. And once that, oh, beloved, I just see the pictures. If they really are in Christ, they will stop this nonsense of accusing people of race. Only in Christ there is no race. So don't let nobody fool you to say, I'm a Christian, and they practice race and prejudice. When you're truly in Christ Jesus, you will not practice racism. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Woo! We God went into something. See, uh, now I, I, I've got this, and I get so involved with the uh, uh, teaching, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to sow a seed. Here it comes. Hallelujah. On your screen, if you would like to sow a seed, it helps me. This is a separate 
you know, it's an extension of the local church, but this is a separate uh, ministry uh, that we carry. And for years now, uh, Apostolic Insight Ministries, please sow a seed and you will reap a harvest because in this ministry, we aim to speak the rightful things of God. Hallelujah. And make out your check, uh, whether it's a dollar, two dollars, I cannot tell you how much to give, but I thank God that there are people that are giving and make out your check to AIM and mail it to box 485 right there on your screen. Hallelujah. I always forget to bring these things up because I get so caught up with the anointing and I can just imagine God saying, enough is enough. This race, uh, racism stuff must uh, be brought to a judgment, uh, judgment and must be uprooted now and dealt with. And you know what I wish? They will make a law. They will make a law that says anybody who, who is uh, 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 racial motivated, there's a huge fine. I wish they want to make a law that anyone who wants to uh, 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 practice uh, prejudice, uh, there's a serious fine and uh, put a stop to all this nonsense. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for tuning in today. Hallelujah. God bless you. Bye now.